this morning as I woke up in the spirit and as I just finished up the prayer call, I, I felt an unction uh, to talk about the ministry of angels. Hello, Pastor Lewis. God bless you. I, I, and I, I, I want to just be brief here and maybe one day I'm going to actually give a seminar or a much more extensive teaching on the ministry of angels. But, uh, you know, I want to start off with this. Uh, <clears throat> you are made to encounter angels. You and I are made to encounter angels. All right. And angels are accessible and angels are uh, accessibly uh, uh, available for you to encounter. Amen. And the angels are accessibly available for you to encounter. Someone write that down for me. Okay. And how do we know this? Because all throughout the, the Bible, whenever angels were present, it meant that Jesus was present. Come on now. Angels will never deviate you from Jesus. You better hear me. Angels will never deviate you from Jesus. Okay. If angels deviate you from Jesus, then that means that it is a fallen angel. It means that it is an angel masquerading itself in life. So what is masquerading? Like masks? It means that it's acting, it's inacting, it's pretending. All right, if an angel ever deviates you from Jesus, if an angel ever deviates you from the word of God, then it is a fallen angel, and it is a fallen angel that is masquerading, pretending itself, pretending to be uh, a, a, an assistant of the Lord, pretending to be on the side of the Lord. And I believe... That uh, every single one of us, we're made to encounter angels because whenever angels were present and encountered the matriarchs and the patriarchs, what is patriarch? What is a matriarch? It is a father and a mother of the faith. Whenever angels encountered a father and a mother of the faith in the Old Testament, you saw that it was actually a theophany. It was actually a Christophany. What is that? It means that it was a manifestation of Jesus himself. So you guys better hear me. Whenever angels showed up in the Bible, it meant that Jesus was showing up. Whenever angels showed up, in the Bible, it meant that Jesus showed up. So what, what does this mean? It means that um, whenever uh, Jesus shows up, there will always be the manifestation of angels. There always will be. Why? Because angels are always accompanying our Lord and our Savior. Angels are always encircled around the throne of God. So whenever Jesus and the presence of God is made manifest and is showing up in due power right now in reality, in, in the natural realm, then that means that that throne room rule is being made present. What does that mean? Catch me here. Uh, when President Trump, or let's say when the mayor, when the mayor, when the president comes to your town, your city, wherever you're watching from, I'm here in Kauai, okay, I, I live in Los Angeles. Imagine President Trump comes, or the president comes to Los Angeles. What's going to happen? That means he's making his jurisdiction known. He is making his authority known, which means that the CIA, the Secret Service, the FBI, the military, the police, all of those levels and rankings of governmental authority begins to come into unity and it is made known that the king, that the president, that a person in charge of authority is coming into town. So that means whenever Jesus is showing up in a meeting, in a place, in a city, in a region, that means whenever Jesus is manifesting himself, that means that angels are being revealed and released to take authority over a land and over a dominion, to prepare the way, and also to, uh, to make assure and to uh, confirm the ministry of the king. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that teaching the revelation makes sense to you. If that makes sense to you, someone say amen. So angels always encircle the throne room of God, which means that whenever Jesus is showing up, angels are showing up. Okay, and, and, and. so I, I want to give you just a few nuggets, a few keys today, this morning. Okay, number one, angels, uh, uh, angels uh, are accessible and available uh, because it points us to Jesus. All right, angels always point us to Jesus. I, I remember, you know, as I did this teaching, uh, a young man in the church said, oh man, I feel so confused. I've never even heard about angels. You know, why are you talking about angels? It's all about Jesus. And I said, well, whenever angels show up, it points us to Jesus. The reason why angels show up is because it's to confirm the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It is to confirm the presence of the Holy Ghost. So in the Old Testament, as I said earlier, whenever angels showed up, it meant that Jesus was showing up. It was a Christophany or a Theophany. And I want to pray here today that every single one of you will learn to have angelic encounters. Because whenever angels show up, it means that Jesus is showing up. It means that the King is making himself present and available and is manifesting himself today. Someone say amen. All right. And number two, angels uh, are accessible because they're here uh, to uh, confirm the throne room of, and the power of God. As I said earlier, whenever angels show up, it means that they're here to operate and to confirm the kingdom, dominion, and rule of Jesus Christ. All right? Number three, whenever angels show up, it means that they're carrying something. Okay? Angels are carriers. Angels are messengers. Angels are celestial beings. They're spirit beings. Okay? They're spiritual. You and I are humans, which means that we are uh, clothed with flesh. We are limited. All right? Angels are, in a sense, they're, uh, they're not finite. Okay? But they're everlasting. What does that mean? That means that they were created, okay? To be eternal, it means that you are not created. 
Okay? Angels were created. Angels are created beings. Someone say amen. Angels are created beings. And it says in the book of Genesis that when God created all the heavens and the earth and all the vast array, that word vast array, it, it stands for all of the angelic. And so angels are created beings, they're celestial beings, they're spiritual beings, and they can show up in the supernatural. That's why a lot of times you can feel them. You know, the Bible says in the book of Psalms that angels are uh, winds and there are flames of fire, which means that, you know, whenever you feel winds, whenever you feel winds of change or you feel, you know, uh, you feel, uh, you sense something. And, and, you know, a lot of people can say, oh, you know, do I just need to feel something? No, it's not just about feeling something. But, you know, when, when God is encountering you, then it looks like something. It looks like something. When heaven invades earth, it looks like something. And so angels are created and they are celestial beings, they're spiritual beings that they want to make themselves manifest. But we see this, that angels are carriers. Of course, angel uh, in the Greek, it means messenger. And it means that they carry a message. They carry a message. They carry a ministry. They, they're carrying blessings. So now whenever we praise and we worship, uh, you know, angels are actually carrying the blessings of God. So the reason why in the book of Daniel we see this, Daniel was fasting and praying for 21 days. And after 21 days, the archangel Michael said that I was not able to come to you. I was not able to come to you uh, until the 21 days were completed. I was not able to come to you. And when I came, there was a breakthrough that happened. Come on, I know I'm talking to somebody. The reason why angels are, are not revealing the breakthrough that you need is many times because there's a lack of prayer, there's lack of presence, there's lack of uh, 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 alignment in the heavens. So therefore, you're not re you're not receiving the due recompense, the due rewards. You're not receiving the things that God wants to release to you. So that's why it's called warfare, which means that Daniel was fasting and praying for 21 days. The Bible says that the archangel Michael was wrestling with the principality of Persia, with the prince of Persia. The archangel Michael was wrestling in the spiritual realm in the second heavens. And the reason why some of you are not getting your blessings is because angels carry the blessings and there's a warfare for your blessings to come to you there's a warfare for your blessings to come to you even generational blessings sometimes there's a warfare uh, against it so therefore uh, we need to pray and fast and praise and declare robo so that uh, the angels that are carrying these blessings can bring it to fruition and manifestation here today someone say amen uh sorry about this glare that's coming forth here and and so i believe that angels uh, carry blessings, okay? Angels carry blessings. Uh, they, they carry, they're carriers of the kingdom, domain, and rule of God in Jesus' name, all right? Uh, uh, number five, or, or what point am I at? Number four, I believe. The next point I want to talk about is that there's rankings in the angelic, okay? There's rankings in the angelic. Ranking, what does that mean? That means that there are, uh, there's, uh, there's realms of authority. There are levels of the angelic, okay? Uh, there's archangels, uh, there's angels, uh, you know, and the demonic, as we see in the book of Corinthians, there's spiritual powers, high places, authorities, there's rankings in the spirit, and uh, there's different types of angels out there, okay? I mean, they're not just fat little Cupid, Valentine's babies, uh, you know, Greek-looking angels, you know, no, there's different types of angels, and there's rankings in the spirit, and the higher your rank goes, I, I want you to hear this, the higher your rank goes in the spirit, that means the higher is the dimension of the operation of the angelic on your life. Which means that the more you increase in the spirit, it means that the uh, ministry of angels increases on your life. When you grow in the spirit and when the Lord entrusts you with greater authority in the kingdom, it means that he is entrusting a greater measure of the angelic on your life. Now, once again, why, why is the ministry of angels important? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that they are here to serve us, to serve the heirs and the sons of God. What does that mean? They're here. Angels are here to assist and to serve which means that angels are, in a sense, uh, part of the playing field and the playing card of what God is doing and what we need to do. Okay, they are enforcers. They are in actors. They are in assisters. They are employers, okay? Which means that they work for God, but they work for you. They are employees, and they work for God, and they work for you. Which means that we are called to deploy we are called to release, we are called to send, we are called to give the command, give the word, and angels are being released because they're here to assist us. Amen. They're here to assist us and to help us in the kingdom work and in the kingdom rule and reign. Which means that we have authority to command angels by the word of the Lord. We have authority to command angels to release them, to assist us in the kingdom governing work in Jesus' name. So, somebody here. And, and so there's many different types of angels. And there's rankings. And the higher you go up in your ranking of the Spirit, angels can discern it. The Lord will discern it and He will add them onto you.
Someone say amen. They're a crucial part of the kingdom. Crucial part. Well, people say, well, Pastor Ben, uh, you know, the Bible says that one third of the angels fell with Lucifer. And even Jesus said in the book of Revelation that he saw him shooting down, saw him falling down from heaven like a lightning. All right. And one third. Well, let, let me say this. Uh, what if that was only one third of the angels that were created then? The Bible never says that Jesus stopped creating angels. He, angels are still being created. Angels are still being birthed. Angels are still being released. Come on. Angels. Come on now. All right. It's not one third of the angels then. And wow, it's, it's one third uh, of the angels are fallen and they're demonic and they're evil and they're nephilim. No, no, no. It's one third of the angels then. You, you hear me? Which means that there's so many angels, celestial beings that are at work and in operation. Praise the Lord. Uh, I want to say one more thing uh, before it brings us to a close here. Uh, there's so much more I could say. If you guys are receiving this, give me some hearts and likes. And trust me, uh, I just woke up this morning, and as I finished my prayer call, I said, man, I, I feel like I need to talk about angels uh, today. <laughs> I need to talk about angels today. And uh, I'm here in Kauai, and afterwards, after this, I'm going to go snorkeling. Amen. Uh, but uh, I, I want to talk about one more thing here. Uh, uh, praise the Lord. I, I, uh, angels are so necessary for us to encounter and see. Now, we all know uh, the story of the prophet Elijah, where the prophet Elijah opened up the eyes of his servants. The prophet Elijah said, I want to open up your eyes so that you can see the ministry of angels. And and the eyes of Gehazi opened up and he saw, um, he saw the chariots, he saw angels all around, and he was encouraged. Amen. I believe that the Lord wants to open up your eyes in the spirit so that you can, you would not be ignorant of what he's not doing and what he's doing, but you would be so aligned and so confident in the presence of the Lord and the word of the Lord, and you would be so aware of what he's doing. All right, here's the thing. A lot of us are not aware. Uh, the lack of awareness is ignorance, and the lack of awareness will kill us. The, the Bible says that, uh, you know, uh, lack of vision, people perish. What does that mean? Lack of vision means the lack of awareness, which means that you are not seeing. I believe that the Lord wants to open up your eyes so that you can see, so that you will not be ignorant and perish, but you can see with vision, so you can be aware of what the Lord is doing. Uh, last night, as I was uh, driving to the tent meeting in Kauai, uh, you know, as I was driving to the tent meeting, I literally saw a, a miracle angel, okay? I saw an angel of miracle, and I remember at the, uh, after the end of the meeting, somebody came up to me and said, uh, talk to me. What, what does it mean that you saw a miracle angel? What did it look like? Uh, what did this miracle angel look like? And I, I told him, you know what? I just discerned in the spirit. And as I was driving, literally, I saw a translucent gold, like the shape of an angel in the sky in the spirit as I was driving my car. And I saw a miracle angel, and I felt in my spirit that the Lord was saying that this miracle angel was being made present to assist and to operate in these tech meetings while I'm here in Kauai. And I also felt that the Lord was saying that it's a time and a season of miracles. Everybody watching now and on the replay, it, expect great miracles. We are in a time and a season where miracles are manifesting and are increasing because it's high holy days, okay? Whenever it's high holy days, the 10 days of all, it means that there's even more angels in operation. And I believe that we are going to see an increase of miracles, signs and wonders. And, and I preached last night, I said, you know what? There's a different dimension of miracles and signs and wonders, okay? Big difference with miracles and signs and wonders. Miracles, many times, I mean, there's so many different types of miracles. You know, I mean, so many miracles, you know. Uh, I, uh, you know, I, I get a money miracle, financial miracle. I get a healing miracle. You know, I get a, uh, uh, an encounter miracle, a relational miracle. I get a, uh, you know, a supernatural, uh, you know, uh, encounter miracle. There's so many different types of miracles. You know, the fact that we're breathing, the fact that we're alive, you know, that's a miracle. But a sign and a wonder has to do with the unusual realm. It has to do with something that's way out of our mind, way out of our thinking, way out of our understanding, uh, which is the unusual. Someone say unusual. The unusual is it causes you to just be bombarded, to be bogged down, to be perplexed, to be bewildered. It's out of your thinking. It's out of the natural. It's out of the logic. And I'm believing that the Lord's about to release the unusual miracles. What are that? The creative miracles. The miracles of his glory, of his presence, where things are instant, things are sudden, things are, are just so supernatural that it's going to shock us all. I'm believing for the unusual miracles. And as I saw this angel last night in the spirit as I was driving, I felt in my spirit the Lord say, this is a miracle angel. And I know it was on my heart. And yes, yesterday we saw a demonstration of miracles. We saw people getting healed. A lady dropped off her cane and, you know, all these things. But I believe in the spirit in, in this season. We're about to see an increase of miracles and an increase of signs and wonders and an increase of the unusual. 
We're about to see an increase of the unusual. Someone say amen, hallelujah. Give me some hearts and likes here, people of God. I'm going to bring this to a close here. Um, I want to pray right now. I, I know I, I did a brief teaching. Uh, I did a brief teaching on the ministry of angels. Remember, angels always represent the presence of Jesus. And angels always represent uh, uh, the pleasure of Jesus as well. Okay, I mean, angels can rebuke and angels can correct. We see that. The angel of the Lord came and met Mary and said, you know, uh, 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 the Lord has chosen you. You have found great favor in the sight of the Lord. So therefore, he's about to impregnate you. You are his chosen vessel. And, uh, you know, but also, you know, angels come to correct. Even as we see the angel of the Lord came to correct Zechariah, the husband of Elizabeth, the father of John the Baptist. But the angel came and corrected Zechariah and, you know, shut his mouth. Amen. Uh, so there's all types of angels. And, you know, uh, and I believe that the Lord is about to encounter many people even now in dreams and visions. OK, I feel this so strong as I'm in this unction of the word of God. The Lord's about to encounter many of you in dreams, even in the next two to three weeks. OK, um, remember, angels point us to Jesus. OK, angels do not deviate us from Jesus. What does that mean? All right. It doesn't mean that we start a new religion like Islam, like Muhammad did, because Muhammad believes that he encountered an angel, which was actually a demon, an evil spirit. And he started Islam. All right. It does not mean that, you know, when an angel gives you new revelation, like Paul says in the book of Galatians, don't be bewitched. You know, it doesn't mean that when an angel comes and meets you and encounters you, it doesn't mean that you're going to start a new cult like Joseph Smith did called Mormonism, where now you have a book of Mormon. No, no, that's heresy. That is a cultic remain remember angels always point us to jesus angels uh whenever there's a ministry or an encounter with an angel you know it is biblical you know it represents the character the nature of god it doesn't deviate you from the truth it doesn't cause you to be weird and kooky but it confirms what jesus is doing it enacts what the holy spirit is wanting to do and also it, they are here to assist us you and i in this ministry in this kingdom assignment that we're living in amen and i believe right now that we're in a great season of miracles i believe right now we're in a great season of supernatural science and wonders the unusual in jesus name and i believe even as the prophet elisha commanded open up the eyes of the servant gehazi because there is more with you than are against you there are more with us that are than are against us there are more with us and i believe in the spirit realm the lord is going to open up our eyes in the spirit so that we can see so that we will not be ignorant but we will uh, operate we will come into alignment hallelujah and i declare that decree even as daniel was fasting and praying for 21 days and archangel michael said that man i, I was held back but your prayers had released the breakthrough your prayers release the breakthrough your prayers release the angel and allowed me to come i wanted to come to you you know how many times it says even in the epistles and the scriptures how how i long to come to you how 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 the lord longs to release blessings to you but he wants us to subdue our soul subdue our region our realm around us in prayer and in fasting how many times the lord wants to release miracles and release angels and i believe right now the lord's wanting to release there's a tipping point in the spirit because of what you've been praying because of what you've been fasting into pressing your face into and as you've been praying, there's a tipping point happening now because the Lord is going to release a wave of angels, a wave of the angelic, a wave of supernatural presence and power. Hallelujah. The Lord's releasing that because the Bible says that angels are like winds and flames of fire, which means that there's always a burning. There's always a cleansing. There's always a holiness. There's always supernatural presence. There's always a refreshing. And I believe the Lord is going to release that over you, even as you've been praying and contending in the spirit realm. Father, I pray for our friends. I pray for our family. Bless them. And may we be expectant of the supernatural and the increase, even in the next two weeks. Many of you are going to get dreams and visions. You're going to experience the angelic and hold the way. Release now. Fire. Shabbat Sama. And may you be aware and may you understand the angels that are assigned to you in this season. And as you grow up in rank, the Lord will assign and entrust you with even more. In Jesus' name. You're receiving this. Someone say amen. Hallelujah. Listen, uh, <clears throat> I want you to type in comment below what... Uh, what you learned, um, what made sense to you, what ministered to you, what enlightened you, uh, you know, uh, and uh, if you have any questions, just comment below as well. God bless you guys. Keep it